All right, good afternoon. This morning, the Secretary General spoke at the start of a five-day meeting with the 129 UN resident coordinators who are leading our teams, the UN's response and recovery efforts from the COVID-19 pandemic around the world. This is the third global gathering of resident coordinators and, of course, the first one to be fully online due to the pandemic. The Secretary General said he counts on them to fully mobilize their partners and UN country teams to support governments in ensuring equitable access to the COVID-19 tests, treatment, and very soon, hopefully, vaccines, which are global good and must be available to all everywhere. Mr. Guterres noted that the pandemic has revealed profound fragilities with inequalities growing, the climate emergency worsening, and hatred spreading. He said that recovery better from the pandemic and bolstering action from the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development must be two sides of the same coin. During the coming days, the resident coordinators will discuss how to set the stage for a more sustainable recovery, including how to protect jobs and bolster social protection and basic services. And, uh, sorry. and here in the Security Council, uh, addressing the Council by video conference, Leila Zarugi, the head of the UN peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, began by highlighting political tensions in the country, which led to yesterday's announcement by President Tshisekedi that the coalition uniting the Cap for Change and the Front of Front Commun pour le Congo had ended. The DRC cannot afford a serious constitution, institutional crisis, Ms. Arugi told council members. It needs, to be sta it needs stable and functioning institutions that get back to work as quickly as possible and focus on national economic recovery, as well as stabilization in the eastern part of the country ahead of the general elections scheduled for 2020. Three, uh, the special representative said the Security Council can play an important role to encourage a negotiated resolution uh, between the two fact forces that favors lasting solutions, prioritizing the interests of the Congolese people over short-term political objectives that risk further increasing tensions. And the acting special representative for Libya, uh, Stephanie Williams, hosted on Sunday a virtual meeting to inform the Libyan political forum participants of the results of their voting processes over the previous days and to discuss the way forward. She reaffirmed the UN's mission commitment to and respect for the decisions of the four members taken during their recent in-person meetings in Tunisia, according to which decisions should be reached on a consensual basis. Ms. Williams announced that a virtual session will be held in the coming days to discuss the next steps based on the productive suggestions presented by many during the dialogue for members this weekend, during the weekend session. And our acting uh, humanitarian coordinator for Yemen, Laurent Bukera, has said that on De December 3rd, artillery shelling of Hudaydah City was, quote, yet another senseless attack, end quote, that killed and injured many civilians. He shared our deepest condolences with the families and those who had been killed and wished those injured a full, quick recovery. That attack is the second one causing multiple civilian deaths and injuries in Hudaydah within a week, and the third across Yemen. Hostilities in the Hudaydah governorate have escalated in recent months with 49 fatalities and injuries recorded across the governorate on November and 74 fatalities and injuries recorded in October. And the UN uh, peacekeeping mission in the Central African Republic reports that electoral materials, including 12,000 ballot boxes, 4,200 kits, and 12,000 voting booths have arrived in Bangui. This is part of a batch of electoral equipment provided by South Africa in collaboration with the UN mission and the UN development program, and that is to support a democratic process in the Central African Republic. Voter cards for the prefectures of Bamangi Bongora of Akaga that were procured by the Central African government were also delivered. Over 1.8 million people have registered to vote in the December 27th elections. 46.6% of those registered are women. The mission's deputy special representative, Denise Brown, was at the airport along with other dignitaries to receive the materials, described the arrival of voter cards as a critical marker of the positive evolution of the election preparation process. And on Monday, the special representative and head of the mission, Mankar and Jai, and the G5 uh, group members, uh, those are, are 
friends of uh, Central African Republic, started a series of meetings with all 17 candidates to the presidential election to discuss the electoral process, including international community support to the elections. And tomorrow, the Secretary General will open the annual high-level pledging conference of the Central Emergency Response Fund, or SURF. The event will be convened by the Office of the Coordinator for Humanitarian Affairs. It will highlight SURF's achievements in 2020 and pledging announcements for 2021. There will also be a discussion on how to collectively increase the level of the fund uh, towards the $1 billion target endorsed by the General Assembly in 2016. The event will bring together senior representatives from the UN member states and observers, UN agencies, non-governmental organizations, foundations, and the private sector. Since its establishment, SURF has provided nearly $7 billion for life-saving support, supporting humanitarian action that has helped hundreds of millions of people across more than 100 countries and territories. This, is of course, this, of course, would not have been possible without generous and consistent donor support. And um, a report released today by the UN Assistance Mission in Afghanistan and the UN Human Rights Office warns that Afghan women and girls are being failed by the country's justice system with their access to justice for crimes and violence remaining tenuous. UNAMA found that only half of the reported crimes reached a primary court with perpetrators convicted in only 40% of all documented cases. Other uh, issues raised in the report include the prom problematic handling of rape cases and ongoing detention of women for, quote, running away. Throughout the global campaign for 16 days of activism against gender-based violence from the 25th to the 10th of December, the United Nations in Afghanistan calls on for an increasing efforts to prevent and redress violence against women and girls. This is particularly important in the context of the outbreak of COVID with the ongoing monitoring by the UN mission suggesting that violence against women and girls increased as have diffi as difficulties for victims in reporting crimes uh, has and accessing safety and justice has also increased. And two events to flag related to the UN Office for of Counterterrorism. First, this morning, the office held an event to launch the International Hub of Behavioral Insights to Counterterrorism, inaugurated today as a program office in Doha in Qatar. Vladimir Voronkov, the head of the, mission, of the office, said through insights from cog cognitive psychology, behavioral economics, and social sciences, the hub will study how humans think, decide, and take action. It will help his office understand why and how people become radicalized to violence and where they can intervene most effectively to halt the radicalization process. And just about now, Mr. Voronkov, the head, uh, excuse me, and the head of UNODC, uh, Gada Wali, that's the Office for Drugs and Crime, will sign a joint plan of action to strengthen internal collaboration with counterterrorism and preventing violent extremism. And today uh, marks something that we rarely do these days, and that is International Civil Aviation Day. In a message, the Secretary General noted that this year's observance of the day falls its COVID-19 has severed international connections by air, cutting off businesses from clients, keeping tourists from destinations, and disproportionately affecting the vulnerable. The Secretary General stresses that countries must act urgently to sustain their air transport sectors in the face of the many COVID-related challenges. Yet they must do so with climate in mind, he added. He urged the entire sector to commit to net zero by 2050 and develop a strategy in alignment with the Paris Agreement well ahead of next year's climate uh, conference. Okay, I've uh, run out of words. I assume you have not. Uh, so, uh, yalla. Um, James Bayes, what a surprise. Can I start by asking you um, about Ethiopia? Because um, yep. we were going to get a briefing on yeah, Ethiopia, I know. and I know yeah. that's not being, possibly going to be tomorrow now. Um, first, there are reports that a UN team has been shot at um, uh, while trying to get access to a refugee camp called Shimelba. Can you give us any information? Yeah, I'm well aware of these reports. Uh, for a variety of reasons, I'd rather not comment at this point. Can you tell us how an overall view on how easy um, the uh, it is now currently for the UN to operate um, in Tigray uh, province of Ethiopia? Are you facing any obstacles? Are you getting all your 
personnel and all your aid in and able it, to deliver it widely to the people that need it? Short answer is that it remains extremely challenging. Uh, we are not yet getting the access uh, that we need. The discussions with the government are, are ongoing, uh, but the situation remains um, challenging, to say the least. Could you tell us what the challenges are? Because some of the challenges, one assumes, are, are disorder and violence and whatever. But are there also, given that this agreement was signed, are there bureaucratic problems? Uh, look, uh, there are a there is a level of uh, you know perhaps administrative uh, hurdles that need to be to be passed. Uh, it's clear that the situation, at least from our point of view, is and the information we're getting is not yet stabilized. Uh, issues of humanitarian access, issues of basic services, water and electricity, uh, makes all this very, very complicated. One final one from me on a different subject, uh, Libya. Um, you ha had a statement there from Stephanie Williams, but it didn't address some reports, uh, slightly worrying reports, of, um, uh, of potential problems ahead in Libya. Um, General Hafter has put his forces on a high level of re readiness. Uh, the GNA, from their side, say that he's been moving troops towards CERT, and they say the UN is saying nothing, and they are threatening to pull out of the accords that they signed. Uh, I mean, so, what, what, what is, what, how, how concerned is is the UN about this? No, I mean we we've seen the reports which are concerning. We would urge everyone uh, in Libya, the part, the Libyan parties, and uh, and those who have influence over them, uh, to ensure that this. You know this, this cessation of hostilities uh, continues. I mean, there are there are political talks at many different levels which are progressing well, uh, and we want to make sure that continues. Uh, Edie, uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, I have two questions also. First, does the Secretary General have any reaction to Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro? claiming a sweeping victory in congressional elections that uh, the opposition boycotted? No, we have no... Uh, we, have, we had no involvement in the organiza organization of these, uh, uh, of these elections. And you'd recall there had been a request uh, from the Venezuelan government for electoral observation. However, uh, that would have required a mandate from a legislative body of the UN, which was not uh, not received. So uh, we have no particular comment at this point. Um, and secondly, do you have does the UN have any update on the movement of the Rohingyas uh, to that island? Has the UN been given access to? talk to those who... No, uh, there's been no, uh, no change. We do not have access to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to, to the island. Uh, I know our, our colleagues are trying to follow up on the, on the reports of people being, uh, being pressured. Uh, it is, our position remains completely unchanged, that no, no one should be forced uh, to relocate. Uh, everything needs to be done on a voluntary and dignified basis. Um, and, and we would also want to be able to uh, take a look at the relocation site to ensure uh, that it is uh, fit for purpose. Madame. Stéphane, the situation uh, in Côte d'Ivoire is extremely difficult and volatile. Is the UN uh, concerned about it? Uh, yes, but I, I need to get an update on Côte d'Ivoire for the time being. Okay, uh, Abdel Hamid and then Maria. Uh, thank you, Stefan. I want first to ask you about if you have any update on the inter-Libyan dialogue going on in Gadamis. And do you see that the attack of Haftar, General Haftar, on uh, a GNA uh, base in West South Coincided. I mean, is it uh, just incident, or we, we, it happens as the dialogue started today? I think uh, we, we don't have any confirmation of any ceasefire violations. We've obviously seen the reports, and I think I, I answer. I don't know if you heard my answer to uh, to James, which is to be. 
to urge all sides to respect the ceasefire as talks are going on at various, uh, at various levels. Yes, uh, my second question and, and the tweet of Mr. Nikolai Mladinov about the arsenal against the church, a famous uh, uh, church in Palestine near Jerusalem. He used the word arsonist. While he was a settler, he was caught by the Palestinian. He was handed to the police. He's 49 years old. And the word arsonist is very vague. He, instead of saying he is an extremist settler, who tried to set a famous historic church on fire. Uh, do you have any comment on that? I mean, I, I, I'm not sure what you want me to say. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I will, I, I think the, the word arsonist is a very strong word. It denotes a, a criminal intent uh, to do harm by setting, uh, by setting fire. I'm, I'll leave it at that. I'm not a native English speaker, but to me, arsonist has always been a very strong, uh, strong and direct word. Yeah, the nationality of this arsonist is vague, so that is what also is missing. I mean, he should say Israeli arsonist. I, I thought I, that listen, the, I, I'm sh uh, clarifying the nationality of the arsonist is important in this incident. Noted. Okay, uh, Maria Kenova. Hi, Steph. Uh, on Nagorny Karabakh, um, I uh, I assume that uh, the SG discussed with Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, the deployment of uh, United Nations mission in the region. So I wonder if you have any update on the timing, possible timing of deployment of such a mission and how many people will be included there? How many UN departments will participate in this mission? No, I do not have some more details. I'm trying to pry some details and as soon as I'm able to pry them, I will share them. Uh, Iftikar. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, following up on Rohingya refugee situation, uh, the uh, the UNHCR chief also made a similar statement that you just made. But I want to know whether there are UN personnel in Cox's Bazar witnessing this thing, and they are not. Uh, they, we, the, the UN has a large presence, uh, has a humanitarian presence in Cox's Bazar, and they have our colleagues on the ground have been following up. Uh, to try to confirm these, uh, some of the, the disturbing reports uh, we, have, uh, uh, we, we have seen and heard of. Okay, uh, Ray. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, on tweet, uh, the US NSC, which is the National Security Council, uh, said from December 7 to December 12, we encourage Venezuelan inside and outside Venezuela to reject the regime's fraudulent legislative uh, elections and help restore democracy via the Consulta Popular. Any comment? Look, it, uh, I, I'm not, uh, not going to comment on, on the tweet from the National Security Council. What I can tell you is that from our end, uh, the Secretariat is not going to pronounce itself on uh, the legitimacy of the new uh, legislative bodies. Uh, we will continue to interact with all political actors and keep advocating uh, for serious uh, negotiations uh, among these actors. I mean, this is a time clearly of great uh, polarization among uh, Venezuelan uh, political actors. Uh, it is important that serious negotiations among all political groups in Venezuela is, is the only way to resolve the country's many challenges, and of course, uh, with full respect for human rights and the rule of law. Okay, uh, I will leave it to Brendan uh, to answer all your questions. Uh, Silvian, you had a question for me? Go ahead. Oh, she's... Uh, I don't know, I did. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there is a report on UNIFIL, the incident on UNIFIL in, uh, in happening in Saida uh, last weekend. Uh, how much uh, the UN is concerned on this issue? 
Let, let me check. I haven't seen that uh, report, but I will check for you. Varma, a toi, as they say in English.